It's a time for Beckett from China. Hey, it's a new day in the YouTube Matrix, so let's take a closer look at the new game stick from Datafro. By the way, it's awesome that you're tuning in, because it's going to be fun, it's going to be a package from China, and let's do an unboxing, and just an unboxing, nevertheless, let's take a close look what's inside. Okay guys, so this is what you're going to get inside the box itself. It comes with the two controls, so let's start with these. It's an interesting thing because now we're having more like the two sets, the two controllers with one dongle. And that is just new because sometimes you're just going to get a dongle for each controller. It's all confusing, but I like it because if you want to use a four play configuration, you need to get basically two dongles. There's no way of adding, let's say, new controllers to the dongles. What you see, what you're going to get. So they are working on two AAA batteries. They are more like the expensive, better versions. They have a nice rubber compound on the joystick. Not to be compared with the original, still nothing beats a regular PlayStation 2 controller. But this thing feels not bad at all, and not to forget. They don't smell chemical, and I wasn't surprised, simply because these things are not feeling that bad. We're going to get, yup, the extension for the HDMI, and the reason why... Because the 4K sticks they are selling are quite huge, and this one is more like flat and quite fat. And come on, be honest, if you need to stick this in your television, or first of all, it's not going to fit. And other problem is that it will cover a second port, so not a very convenient thing. So here at the back, we're going to get only one USB port and a micro USB for powering it on. And CF card is over here. Okay, so what we're more having is, of course, the toilet paper manual that gives you a quick explanation how the system works, what can you do with it, and how does it work, whatever. Either they're not really really pointless most of the time and here we having the micro usb for giving this thing some juice oh, look at this usb cable got like a very strange green color never seen it before okay folks so that's what you're going to get in the box and uh, let's take a close look at the stick itself okay i want to point out that it's really confusing with these four stick game sticks right i mean 4k game sticks with a and the reason why is very simple it's because there are so many brands out there who is basically selling it in the future we're going to do more like an ultimate showdown for all the four game sticks and we're more going to make a top 10 simply because it's going to start becoming a jungle and I don't like it. Okay, so I'm just going to give you an example. So with my monitor I'm going to use it here in the review. So my stick doesn't fit. So I'm glad they give you a freaking extension cable. Yeah. Okay, so the following thing that you needed to do is just plug in the extension cable. Plug in the stick, not in your monitor, but in the extension cable, because it doesn't fit. The next thing we need to do is grab ourselves this weird looking micro USB cable. Then we're going to connect it to our fancy 4K game stick from Datafrog. And, oh man, these things are freaking awful to get out of there. Okay, so next. Time. I just need to do this assembly already before I'm going to make the video, of course. Stick it in the extension port. Take consideration that sometimes it doesn't work like this simply because the port is only used for service and not for plugging something in. Okay, then we're going to plug it in the back over here. It's going to be one freaking kyber I made then stick it with some double-sided tape on the back. Oh, what a nightmare. And the, of course, don't forget the dongle itself. Because the dongle is something that we're going to need. Otherwise, we don't have connection with the controllers. All right, so when powering on the stick, this is what we're going to get. It has not quite a choppy image of the right or image. It, it, I think it needs to be a movie, but it's only having two different pictures going back and forward. Quite interesting. Here we have this gigantic list. I'm pressing L and R on the controller we can move to the next page basically this is more like the class like category next up we're having the history then we're having the collection this is more like the favorite list and here we can search for the games so the features are similar like more like the pandora box 6 and some later models i really hate the first list because this is one big mess yeah the previews as you can see this doesn't do anything 
and going any further some of these things doesn't even have one so it has support for MAME, Famicom, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance and Game Boy Color, Mega Drive, Super Famicom, PlayStation 1 and Atari quite interesting to see Atari on a plug and play device like this because this is not very common when pressing select in the main menu, we're going to get the language setting key tune. So let's see if we can change it out. <laughs> Sounds even more horrible. So let's mute it and let's go to the other settings. <coughs> oh, oh man. Oh, I think I'm going to get really allergic to these packages from China. But okay, we're having here the factory settings, system information. And this is more like the same software that I've seen before when it comes to these mini arcade machines. Okay, let's go uh, continue with the games. So when pressing select and start for going back to the main menu, we still have the new options like all the other Pandora's boxes. So we're having quick load, quick save, we're having different slot for each game. Quite interesting, restart, resume, and also we can change the controls if you're having some issues with it. It's quite an interesting option. Far so good. Okay, and let's see how the control is playing. The D pad feels quite cheap, but it is responsive. And the same goes for the input lag for the device itself. I can't say the same for the joystick because the joystick is not at the responsive. And I'm getting my ass kicked. Beefcake time! Beefcake time, yeah man! Nobody to blow up. Let's go indoor and let's see who I can blow up now. Your friend, I got present for you. <laughs> Woo. Mm. Let's go. Turbo button! I messed it up. Press the freaking wrong button. Give me Knuckles. Because Knuckles is a badass. <laughs> Can I fly? Woohoo! I can. Really cool. <laughs> Big slowdown. That's it. Thank you, thank you. That was so difficult. Turbo! Woo! But you can hear that the sound is off big time. A lot of problems with Super NES. Go the frick out of my way.
I don't know what to think about this. The game seems to be running smoothly, but... I'm not feeling that there was something off. But you can see that the game is stutterous big time. Oh! It's not really smooth at all. Oh! <laughs> okay guys, so when you're looking at the Datafrog 4K game stick, it is similar like the previous models. But there are some differences that we're going to talk about, and what do I think of it? That is very important, but before we're going to do that, the controller, it surprises me big time. It doesn't smell chemical, it feels quite nice, I do like these rubbery compounds on the joystick, most of the time they are more like sticky with these chip controllers. The touch is still very cheap, I don't notice any input lag, so in general, the controllers, I like them, and you can always use them for different systems. Okay, so let's talk about the 4K game stick from Datafrog. I've reviewed a couple of them, and I must say this thing is still flawed in many ways. So to begin with the menu, the menu is quite awful. I don't like the layout, I really don't like the color, and it's just one big mess. Especially when it comes to the categorized system, when you're clicking on certain categorized games, you need to wait sometimes up to a couple of minutes to load up the page. It's just a freaking awful and it's really choppy. Quick load, quick save, there are a lot of great features in the machine, but when you're looking at the PlayStation 1 emulation, especially the PlayStation 1, it is really choppy. Depends a little bit what kind of game you're playing, but there's not the experience you want to have with this. So yeah, let me know in the comments what do you think of this. I want to thank you for watching, and if you have any questions, go ahead and leave it in the comments, and I'll see you in the next video.